Welcome to Recovery Recharged with me, Ellen Stewart, Pushy Broad from the Bronx. How does recovery work? How do you use the tools of recovery in everyday life? How do you help someone who is learning to overcome addictive behaviors? The Pushy Broad from the Bronx is here to talk about recovery in a language that we can all understand. Be prepared for real change by recharging the way you think, feel, and act. It's time for Recovery Recharged with Ellen Stewart, Pushy Broad from the Bronx on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Welcome Transformation Talk Radio listeners. My name is Ellen Stewart and I am the Pushy Broad from the Bronx. Welcome to my show Recovery Recharged with my illustrious co-host Dr. Pat. How you doing doc? Oh I'm fired up today for this show boy and I'm so (laughs) glad that you're bringing on the guests that you brought on Um, and tell everybody about the show because I truly do believe that this is a gap this is a gap and in, in, without getting into detail, it's not only a gap, but if you're in one of the programs, not saying, but if you happen to be in that program as a sponsor, you're not allowed, so to speak, to provide coaching or consulting in, a, in an arena like this. And then what is the consequence of that? Now, I'm not saying that program's wrong for that. What I'm saying is there's a gap between this and not using and not drinking and how to have a great life. There's like a giant gap. It's like, how do we get from over here to make those dang promises come true if we're not getting help? Okay, that's enough for me. (laughs) (laughs) That's only the beginning. So we're already in in, in a heightened state today. So you can see how this is going to go. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now, whether or not you are in the midst of this, it is everywhere. The topic is everywhere. So if you need the help, you're going to get some special help today, or you're going to get some special help for a loved one. So if you want to go get something to write with, I suggest you do that because Mm -hmm. we are talking about the exciting job market that's emerging in 2022. And because it comes, the, who's our guest? Who's our fantastic guest? Oh, here guest? we go. We're, we're uh, like talking to her. We haven't <laughs> told anybody like who she is. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I have career coach Melanie Wexler with us today. And I know Melanie really well. She was on my show before when I did Women Who Push For More. She was there. She was with us a little more than a year ago. And she's got so much more to tell us. Let me just tell you a little something about Melanie and why I bring her back. She has 18 years recruiting and staffing experience, and she started working as a career coach back in 2017, and she really takes a very big interest in working with her clients to make sure that they have good resumes, and and she she teaches them how to job search and to interview, and she really helps them utilize social media to find the right career. And she's also here to talk to us about something that is really historic, and that's called the Great Resignation and what that is all about, okay? So we're going to find out what makes a successful career in 2022, and we're going to find out what the opportunities are that are ripe for the picking. So Transformation Talk Radio listeners, welcome career coach Melanie Wexler. How are you, Melanie? I'm good. Thank you. I'm excited about today. It's already fun and I haven't even said anything. (laughs) I'm excited about what you're going to bring to this because I have mentioned this spot mentioned it throughout my shows for about a month now. Um, And you are the perfect person to talk about this and help us. I've even shared stories about the 40 people that walked away from a, a, a Detroit hotel but no one has put it together in comprehensive terms and understanding at the multi-dimensional level like you have. That Ellen, brilliant Ellen, pushy broad from the Bronx to bring this on. (laughs) I aim to please. So why don't you talk a little bit about that, (laughs) Melanie? And why don't you talk a little bit about the great resignation? The floor is yours, honey. Tell us what we need to know. Yeah, so, you know, Ellen, you said it best. We haven't seen this type of market in I would say close to 20 years. Um, You know, I started 
21 years ago in recruiting, it was the best of all, you know, it was the best market we ever saw. People were literally throwing money at candidates just to stay at positions. Um, people were, you know, you couldn't find any candidates. You were literally, I remember days of people walking in the door and I'm like, you ready to go to work tomorrow? I have a job for you. Um, and they'd be like, no, hold up. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> like, you know, they were scared. They were like, what, what, no, slow it down there. Um, that was also a great tech boom. We had a great real estate um, market at that point too. Um, so we haven't seen this market for over 20 years. And now it is an employee's market. Um, the pandemic really brought to light a lot of issues. Um, of course, we saw everything that was happening from a racial perspective that brought a lot of you know, conversations to the table um, that was translating into what was happening in the workplace. Um, was there diversity? Was there inclusion? Was there equity in the workplace? The answer was no. There were, you know, we saw gaps within that. Um, we also saw people wake up and realize nothing is really permanent in this world. You know, yeah, you have quote unquote a permanent job, but is it really permanent? We saw, you know, industries decimated um, overnight. The hospitality industry just literally, you know, all of a sudden you had, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of people out of work and really didn't know where am I going to go? What am I going to do? But it also gave people a lot of reflection as well of like, what is important to me? You know, you had a lot of people, you know, passing and dying. And then also you had people that found themselves in, you know, social, in, you know, exclusion. They were all by themselves and they didn't have a community. So you had all these all these factors coming in that we didn't have 20 years ago. You know, 20 years ago, it was just, it was just really, it was just the economic boom that was happening at that particular time. So now we have all these other issues that I truly believe corporate America wasn't prepared to answer because they've never been forced to answer them. They've never been forced to talk about, you know, work-life balance was on you as the employee. It wasn't ever on the it wasn't ever on the company. I mean, there are companies out there that value it and you know help promote it, um, but often a lot of these things were just token words. They didn't have any meaning behind them. You know, they said, "Oh yeah, we believe in work life balance," but oh, that worker is working sixty hours. <laughs> um, you know, so it's like, where's the give and the take? So I think you know that's really what's happened and why we see this market where we see people you know, all of a sudden leaving jobs and going, no, this is what I want out of my career. And money's not going to be the answer. Money is not going to be the answer. And that's a key to remember this time around. Yeah. I love this. I did a short, I do these short little interviews, not on the Dr. Pat show. We call them our good news segments. And I remember not too long ago, last year, uh, Sodesto was part of the interview. They're recruiting people in all that business. And they came on to share their survey. And they were a little surprised. And they go on to ask the question, let me tell you, when we ask these people that are graduating, right, that are in the job market, what is the number one thing and number two thing they want, right? And they had all of their crazy typical money, pension, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> number one, I am not going to work for a company that's not compassion. Number two, yep empathy honestly yeah. like i don't care if people have to stop bad mountain the 20 20 people in their 20s and 30s we have to stop it because we need to listen what is your take on that answer absolutely i talked to i had a client session this morning before um coming on live with you guys and literally one of the reasons she's looking is you know she got in trouble with her manager because she's too empathetic, his own words. You're too empathetic. You're a salesperson. Um, she has an employee that lives in Louisville, Kentucky, where the Breonna Taylor case was happening. Yeah. She had friends that had been, um, unfortunately, you know, killed in some of the situations that were happening there. Her father is a cop. Guess what was happening? Her employee wasn't performing. Um, no, no wonder. I mean, like, who is going to perform well under these circumstances in these times when you feel this pressure? The problem was her manager didn't understand, had never bothered to ask, like, what's happening? Why are you not performing? What's happening behind the scenes? How can I help you? 
Um, you know, and this is actually the one of the reasons why now my client is looking to leave this company because they are not willing to change their mindset. And that's where we see this disconnect right now. You still see companies holding firm on this belief, you know, Sodexo or whoever that comp, you know, whatever that company is still believing Amazon just came out with this report that they're going to in be increasing. I forget the exact number, like three times the average salary or whatever the number is. Again, we can throw money at it, but are we fixing the, you know, is corporate America stepping up to fix the problems that are happening behind the and, scenes? And you're right. And that answer is maybe not yet, but I just want to throw some really big stats in here because it's really important for us to understand exactly what's happening. Okay. Yep. So there have been some great myths about what we call the great resignation of 2021 and many articles about it. So let me just give you some stats that are going to blow you away because they blew me away. Okay. More Americans left their job in April of 2021 than in any other month on record. OK, this is according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and and they they've done an analysis of what they call quits. OK, or the big quit. That's another name for the great resignation. Even more people quit in July of 2021. And now a new record again was broken in August and then again in September. So everybody thinks that because of COVID, okay, and because employ unemployment was so rampant, here's the big myth that that the Greg resignation is only about quitting, and everybody's quitting so that they can stay on unemployment. That is the big myth in this country. Could you please debunk that for us? Because people yeah. think that's why people aren't going back to work. So let's talk okay. about that. <laughs> so people are not quitting and not going back to work to stay on an unemployment. That is a an absolute falsehood that's a that's not there's no truth to it um people are quitting um nobody truly wants to stay on unemployment i mean that that's you know the majority of people i don't have a percentage but i would you know i'm going to just say the majority of people aren't going to fall into that category what has happened is covid the pandemic was a catalyst was a wake-up call for what was happening um, it's not, you know, people aren't staying at home so that they can, you know, all these thoughts that, oh, I'm making more on unemployment. That's absolutely not, you know, that is not the case, not from a long-term perspective by any stretch of the means. That was a, you know, a stopgap. Um, what's happening now is when it came time to come back to work, these employees were asking, well, what has changed within the organization? Are you going to be able to honor if I continue to be a good work from home employee and was able to be productive and was able to still produce everything you expected? And I now have some semblance of a work life balance um, or I have, you know, these other benefits and I've been and I've proven myself. Why am I having to go back into the office? You know, like so now these are questions. And the reality was, again, corporate America wasn't prepared. I always say corporate America tends to, hiring managers tend to be about three to four months behind the curve. They have always, and this goes, the greatest markets and the worst markets. And I've worked in both. I've gone through two recessions. I've gone through the best of the, you know, best market ever as a recruiter. It's how I got started. Even in, you know, even in um, recessions, hiring managers would be like, well, there's hundreds of people just go find, you know, why can't you find me that one person? And the reality was, okay, it's not just like I'm picking people out of a, you know, out of a pot and like, oh, magic. Okay, here it is. Um, you have requirements. There's, you know, these people are just, you know, all over the place. It's a matter of breaking down some of these statistics of really of who the qualified people are and, you know, what type of industry and all these other factors. So, that's where we're at right now is that they've really the American employee in particular has really pushed them to say, no, we want to be heard. We want our, you know, we want to be heard. We want our, you know, we want our recognition of what we're doing, but also we need to have some importance of family and we need to have some importance of work life balance and safety and health measures. And so the COVID was a catalyst for this. It forced us to stop. 
as a country and slow down and take assessment of our life. And guess what? People woke up and said, wait a minute, am I happy? I had the best, you know, I was concerned two years ago when COVID hit about my business because I was like, oh my gosh, people losing their jobs. Hey, per, you know, paying for a coach is like the last thing, you know, that's, you know, extra money. People aren't going to want to throw that around. What I found was the opposite. People said, no, I want to be prepared. I need to be prepared because my company Peloton just did this. They just made announcements. They're laying off a ton of people. And, you know, I need to be prepared for what could happen, but I also want to find something that speaks to my heart and speaks to my passions and aligns yeah. with my values. Doc, did you find transitions at Transformation Talk Radio based on the great resignation and your employees? How did that fare? Uh, not that, no, I didn't. Um, um, I found what I found was uh, people that leave and resign um, leave and resign because we didn't make good hiring decisions to begin with, and we have very high standards for things. And so, you know, this is what I found interesting, they were very grateful to get positions. People are very grateful to get positions. And they'll tell you that unless the position is one like ours, where they don't have experience in this arena. And so they have an illusion of what it's like to be a producer here. Uh, and so there is a disconnect between job reality and job illusion. And that's just not with me. But I will tell you this, when my state went to a minimum wage, and they said it'll take you five years to get there, I did it immediately. I didn't even hesitate. Um, because, yeah, you can wait five years to roll in $15 an hour. But... <laughs> I started in the mailroom. And so for me, it was a different issue. It was, we just need to do it. We don't need to have a four-year projection that we're going to do it. We just need to do it because we need quality people, even at an entry level. Um, but part of this too is making the right hiring decision to answer your question. And that's been a journey for me because I hire from my heart sometimes. And Jessica and Linda will tell you, you need to start with your heart, but you need to do some assessments, Pat. And that's been my lesson during COVID. <laughs> Listen, I understand, okay? I, I also do part of what, what Melanie does, um, you know, in the Northeast, and I completely understand. First of all, let me give you some other statistics because I've been hit all the time with, and I have so many friends that say to me, everybody's quitting and everybody's staying on employment and the whole, and, 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 and everybody has become lazy because COVID is made as lazy. And I also think that's a bunch of, baloney and everything else, because that is not true. And Melanie, you're absolutely right. People don't want to stay on unemployment. That's also a myth. Why do people want to stay on unemployment? It's not yeah. as much as your regular salary. You don't want to feel like you're, you know, you're just collecting. That's a, that's just ridiculous and, and stupid. But it is true that part of the great resignation came from the industries, like you said, hospitality and travel, where, where things were, were, weren't happening. So what are you going to do? I mean, you can't stay in a situation where you know at any moment you know it's not going to be there anymore you're not going to be able to go back to the thing you loved i spent a lot of time in the travel industry the best part of it was being able to travel that's why i was there so i could see the world in the style to which robin leach you know europe on a thousand dollars a day was accustomed and i know pat dr pat understands that reference melanie is like who's she talking about yeah. okay, so, <laughs> who, 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 who is that who is that <laughs> <laughs> you know, but also, too, it gave seniors the opportunity to start a new life, too, because they were at a point, everybody's working later, okay, because, you know, Dr. Pat and I are only 39 years old, we're going to be working for another 30 years at least, you know, but there are people out there that are 65 and, and older than that, that decided, you know what, now is the perfect time to pack it in. Rightfully so. Let me start another period of life, right? But if if the the great recession the the great resignation is not just about quitting, then what's it about and how do you navigate through it, Melanie? Tell us about that. 
No, I really think it's about, I, you know, for the best term is assessment is just, a, it's a great assessment of where you are in your life and what do you want. You hit on the, you know, retirees. We're also, we're at a weird crossroads right now where we have the majority of our workforce is approaching that age of retirement. And a lot of people are wanting to cut back on that. So that's also contributing to these large numbers that we're seeing in terms of not being able to hire because we're not, we haven't made up for that in the workforce. Um, we didn't prepare for that. And so we have that. And I think in terms of really assessing every place I start with my clients before, you know, people think of job searching as I'm just going to go apply for jobs. I'm going to hit a submit, hit submit. And I tell people we have to take a step back and we really have to say, what do you want? And give yourself permission. And I get it. I've been there. I've been a single mom on, you know, um, you know, welfare before with my, my oldest. I was 21 when I had him, you know, I, you know, struggled paycheck to paycheck. So I totally get, you know, sometimes having quote unquote, pursue your passion or that dream job, you know, and you're saying, sitting here listening to me and going, well, Hey, I need a paycheck. <laughs> I need cash in my, my, my pocket. I a hundred percent get get that. And so you can have short-term and long-term goals and really understanding what those are, but give yourself permission to really think big. What is your dream job? What does that look like to you? Yeah. And then we start to break that down of why, and then assessing your strengths. What are you bringing to the table that makes you unique, that makes you stand out from others? And how can we apply this to the jobs that are out there in the market right now? What does that look like? And so maybe, quote unquote, the dream job is something that's on down the road. Maybe it's not the most immediate, but what can we do to help you build towards that? So I look at it as a roadmap. I always give the example of my dad. God bless him. He, he loved a good atlas and a good map. Nobody uses maps anymore. Um, and so when I... <laughs> Traveled from you know Missouri or back from Maryland to Missouri one Christmas. You know, my dad's like, make sure you have the Atlas in the car, and I'm like, okay, dad. Um, you know, like, um, you know, he was always about the Atlas, having it in the car. Um, and so, but it is, it's a roadmap. It's a roadmap of where do you want, where are you at now, where do you want to go, and then how are we going to get there? And creating an tangible action steps that I believe are realistic, but also push you out of that comfort zone. And so that to me is what, if you're entering this place of, I don't know what I want to do, or I need to take a stock of where I'm at with my career, that is where the first place is, is what does that look like to you? Because oftentimes people apply for jobs, but don't do the first part of the assessment. And then they end up in the exact same situation and they go, well, I, I still don't like my job. I wonder why. Well, we didn't do the work on the front end. So we got to go, we got to take a three steps back. You know, I had a client that was pushing me like, I'm ready to apply. And I'm like, we got to do the work first. <laughs> I'm like, right. we got to do the work. Just trust right. me. <laughs> we got to, right. we got to dig deep. So that's where I start with clients and how I think you need to take the assessment of where you're at and where do you want to go? You know, what I love about this conversation because we learn as we go, right? We learn as we go. You know, I always ask the question, and so does Jessica and Linda, you know, how well do you do with feedback? And everybody's going to say, I do pretty much great. And we realize we can't ask that question. We actually have to give them feedback during the interview and find out how they react to it. Because if you're working here or any part of here, right, Ellen? Yes. And you're a producer or you're Kim or you're Linda, or you're Jessica, and, and one of our hosts or co-hosts call up and say, I really wish you would have edited this video a little bit better, or I don't like my lower thirds. Boy, you have to be loving that feedback here because every day is that. But here's what's kind of fun about what you both are saying. You're gonna laugh. I got an email asking if myself and Dr. Cherry Granrose would resurrect our publications that we did, I don't even know what the year was, eight or nine, on the relationship with what they called a very weird term. I think this is why it didn't take off in business. It's just weird. Protean careers, P-R-O-T-E-A-N careers. It was a thing. 
And it's defined as people that want individual freedom. They want self-growth. They want to define their own career success. And in terms of psychological factors, like job satisfaction, self-actualization. So we did the first research on this, talking about this type of person and their relationship to what academia has a big fancy name called psychological contract violation, basically to broken promises. How many times can you break promises to your staff before they leave? And right. we did this body of research. My dissertation is between two people. And they wanted us to resurrect this. I just got this request. And they wanted me to, and I just thought, I don't think I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it was so emotional for us to talk about what was going on between trust and people back then with downsizing and all of that. And I just wonder, now, as I listen to you talk, if we don't need to go back to some of those basics, if we don't need to really be finding out from people what they value, you know, are you going to be able to work in an environment, although the work is great, but you have a micromanager boss? I mean, what's going to be the impact for you? I think also, I think you're absolutely right. And I think when yep. we come back from the break, we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about exactly what steps we should be taking in moving forward and what Melanie said, what we have to assess. And part of what we have to assess are the kind of things that Dr. Pat was talking about in how we psychologically want to adjust to our new job. Yeah. Not I only, right. I would like Melanie to also talk about one of the myths, and that is the great resignation is all about white collar burnout. I hope we can talk about that thing. Okay. Definitely. We can definitely hear that. Any excuse to explain why people are leaving, right? <laughs> Just about anything. Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back. Lots, lots to go on here. And by the way, if you have a question, Feel free to give us a call, 1 800 930 2819. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is the Pushy Broad from the Bronx. I'm here with Dr. Pat. You're on my show, Recovery Recharged, and we are talking about something that directly affects recovery, and that is finding and holding down a job that we love because that's really important to keep us healthy and in recovery and feeling good about ourselves. So how do we do that in 2022? We've been talking to Melanie um, Wexler, who is a career coach who's been doing this for 17 years. And Dr. Pat put some really interesting questions to her, like, what are some of the things yeah. that we should know before leaving yeah. for a new job? So yeah. give us some ideas, Melanie. Yeah. And Melanie, also let people know how they can get a hold of you, if you don't mind, whether okay. it's a website yeah. or a phone number or whatever you got going on. Definitely. So one of the things in terms of if you're thinking about leaving your job right now, and one of the things that you can easily start to do, and even if you are in the job search and you're, you know, you're actively looking is take some time and it sounds kind of silly, but just a simple, like, um, kind of that positive and negative. Why, if you, if you're considering leaving your company, why would you stay? Why do you want to go? And that's a good indication. You can also look at that list and say, is there things that I could address with my employer that maybe would solve some of those on the why I want to leave? Or, you know, what is, is it worth staying for the things that you wrote down? Also being very clear about what your must-haves are. And again, these don't necessarily have to be about salary or benefits um, or title or things of that nature. It can be about work hours. It can, you know, remote, hybrid, whatever that may look like. Um, you can even get into, you know, the company values and mission is what you're doing. Is it even motivating you? Do you get excited about going into work? Um, really understanding what your must haves are before you jump into the search. And if you're in a search right now, I would say take a pause and then start to develop this list. It's like, Here's the core of what I really have to have to be, you know, what I feel like is going to make me happy in my next job. Here's some things that I'd like to have, but I'm willing to negotiate 
And then the icing on the cake, if they gave me all of this, I would, you know, be the happiest person in the room. So that's where I would definitely start. And then, you know, one of the other things we were talking about too is there's a lot of people in this great resignation that are looking to transfer into different types of careers. They're pivoting their careers and you find, and all of a sudden, you know, you're left wondering what skills do I need? How do I, you know, am I even adaptable to this? You have people that are looking to get back into the workforce that maybe have been out of work for a period of time. Set down and look at those job descriptions. And I, you know, I'm an old school recruiter. I'm like, print it off, have the piece of paper, and then take a highlighter. Go through and look at what these jobs are asking for. And then ask yourself, what are the skills that transfer that you have? Right now, this is, we are starting to open a book in terms of a new chapter and what's happening. So now is the time to really be able to sell yourself and embrace yourself with those transferable skills. And being able to get in, getting back into the workforce is going to be more important now than ever. And you really have the opportunity to tell your story. The one thing that I am really big on is mindset. Mindset, I was at a very low point in my career back in 2017 before I became a coaching full time. I was still in the workforce. I was struggling with a lot of different uh, issues that were happening in my personal life. Mindset, my mindset was crushed. And I will tell you that this, this is the foundation for which you have to continue to build yourself up every single day. You have to think in a positive way that what you're going to go do is you're going to go control this job search the best you possibly can. And even if you don't necessarily feel it, every single day you tell yourself, that is my job. That is my job. I did that when I was building my business. I literally, every single client I would get, I would like, that's my next client. That's my next client. And as silly and stupid as that may sound, it really does work because then you, you train your brain to think in that manner. And so when you start putting in those positive words and those positive encouragement, even if you don't have anybody else cheering you on, that's going to change the course of your job search. And so I'm a really big believer in that. One thing you can do, um, you can connect with me on my website, which is findsucceedachieve.com. And when you log, when you when it pops up, um, I'm such not a technical person, but when it <laughs> pops up, it'll you can put your email in there and you'll get a free downloadable um, career journal. It's already set out. Um, and this is something I set up because I do believe it's one of the first steps is really taking assessments again of where you're at. What do you envision your life to be? And what, and, you know, what would that paint that picture for yourself and really put those words down the paper? Because I think nowadays when you do that, it makes you really open yourself up and go, wow, this is what I really want. Okay. Let's now then figure out how we can get there. And, you know, and that starts with understanding what's happening in the job market, doing some research. I know that People don't talk about that. You know, people talk about applying for jobs, but a lot of this now goes back to, you know, should I need to research the company and see what kind of employee benefits that they provide? Do they provide, you know, um, you know, counseling and uh, other services that I could potentially utilize that I know I'm going to need, you know, things of that nature may be important to you and your family. So, really doing the research on these companies, having a list of companies you want to work for, have your top 10 list and look for those companies. Find out why do you want to work for them, you know, and then do that research on the front end. And I suggest this is part of the job search process. So my sometimes my clients are like, we haven't talked about applying for jobs. I'm like, well, we're going to, but I would rather see you apply for less. I know this is going to sound counterproductive, because in life, we're told the more you do something, the better you're going to get at it. This is a complete opposite when it comes to job searching. I would rather you apply for one job a week as opposed to 10, because that one job is the one that you're going to go after. You're going to look for those hiring managers. I'm a big LinkedIn user. So on LinkedIn, you're going to start doing the research. You're going to take the time to really start networking and develop relationships. And so I'd rather you invest your time for that one job you really want, as opposed to the other nine that you're already like, yeah, it's okay if I got the interview, but I'm not so excited about it. And you're going to see your time pay off for that. 
Well, first of all, if you want to get to Melanie, like she said, the website is find, succeed, achieve. And those are three very powerful words. Find, succeed, yeah. achieve .com. And if you do that, she has a free career journal, as she mentioned, which is fantastic for you to get started. So what do you think about what she said, Dr. Pat? Um, I, what I think about what she said is that she is on the leading edge of being able to close the gap between the illusion that organizations have of what people want and the reality of what they want. And I was telling you during the break, uh, someone had asked if Cherry, Dr. Cherry Grandrose and I would resurrect the research we did. And we did hard research. This is empirical stuff with anecdotal data. Like this is counting numbers, right? And it's, it stemmed off of my research on broken promises. But here's where we are. If you take a look at what this research says, even when we did it, there was a handful of people looking at it. Now it's accelerated. Here's what they say, and I think this is a key. This level of what they call a protein career concept. I believe in self-direction of my career. I believe in self action that, right? That is okay, and people will stay even if that's not getting met, if there are other conflicting things they want. But what happened in these past two years? Here it is. What happened? People were treated in the strangest of ways. Now, I'm not saying that's every company. I'm, I'm not. And we could laugh about the commercials with the guy that doesn't have his pants on. <laughs> we could do that. But here's what I mean by it. And here's what we're starting to see now. When you look at what people were willing to do to continue to help the organization and what they had to ask for to do it, Johnny, Mary, and Joey is over here fighting with the dog. Yes, you're going to have to live with that because you want me on this meeting because we're developing something really cool. But what's happening now, Melanie, is these exchanges, this it, psychological contracts are, you tell, you're going to do this for me, even if you don't say it, I believe you're going to do it. And then you either do it or you don't do it. If you don't do it, and you look at the consequences that we studied between two people, a boss and an employee, and you don't do it, everything is affected, including yeah. mental health. And what we're seeing now, nobody's talking about. You see, it's one thing to say, come on, man, come on back to work. Come on, come on back. And then you go back to the old way. No, you can't. No, you can't. You can't do that. No, you can't work from home. No, This is not going to work. Or by the way, like the hotel in Detroit, 40 plus people did not, all of them, none of them came back because they had to come back at the same rate. You see, yeah. thank goodness that that hotel over there in Detroit had found something out and increase their wages. But we better figure this out. If we want to be a country here that produces the best, rewards great achievement, and is going to take the world by storm in our economic yes. future. Yeah. And uh, also that's it. That's all I want to say. That's no, my little, right. that's my spiel. And, and I'm actually, now that, <laughs> now that you did this interview, I'm actually reconsidering Colin Cherry and saying we should, re, we should go back into the data set and republish this now that you're, you're saying. Because the reason people are quitting is exactly like this research says. It was way I ahead really, of its time. I was going to say, I really feel like that was so way ahead of its time and how it plays into what I'm seeing and hearing every single day, talking to clients, uh, interacting with people through LinkedIn, hearing from people's stories. Um, what, as I mentioned earlier, COVID was a catalyst, but what we saw happen in the world was we had, um, we had race, we had uh, discrimination issues come to light. And what we also saw was women in particular taking the greatest sacrifice in terms of pay cuts and leaving, having to leave the market because we eradicated daycare all of a sudden and we didn't have resources for families. And that's a huge, and that in my opinion is one of still the hugest gaps that we have not addressed when it comes to corporate America. We still have not addressed that gap for, for proper daycare and costs for daycare. Um, but we also had healthcare issues 
come to the forefront. People are still suffering from the pandemic. Um, people are still having ramifications from having COVID. I'm still hearing this. Um, we either had, you know, all these health issues, but so we had mental health discrimination and racial issues coming to the STEM plus in health. I mean, we literally, in economic issues, we had everything happen. And so if companies don't choose to wake up, this is not just, hey, part of what happened with the pandemic. This will be our country's, this is the lineup for our country for the future. And the younger generation is saying, no, I want companies that are aligned with my values. They're pushing this. And now, you know, and my generation is, you know, right there smack dab in the middle. We've got a good 20 some odd years, probably a little bit longer to retire. And so we're saying, wait a minute, I don't want to work like this. I know I don't personally want to work like I was for 20 years of my career for not being, you know, recognized and appreciated for who I was and for what I brought to the table. I think that everybody 20 years ago and even 30 years ago was hoping that over time we would be working more and more from home and we would have that work home balance. So now it's ironic that when you're forced to do it, all of a sudden there's a, <laughs> there's a backlash of that. Okay. And I think that's what people do. Some people are just oppositionally defiant. Okay. You tell me I can't. So now I don't want to, I just know that what I do as a recovery coach has tripled during COVID, not only because of what's going on out there, but because people are getting used to the fact that the communication we have virtually is just as important and just as meaningful as my talking to that person face to face. Okay. It's not like 30 years ago where you only had the telephone to look at. Okay. I can see two beautiful faces right in front of me and realize that I'm making just as much of an impact to you as I would be as if you were sitting in the room with me. And I think that's the way it is of business today. It doesn't matter if you put me in an office for eight hours. I'm going to get just as much done in that office for eight hours. In fact, maybe more done in my house when I don't have to make sure that I've punched a clock in and I've punched a clock out. Yeah, and that's, that's what makes us free to do what we need to do. And if somebody is happy because they're not worried about the stress of where they have to be, work improves completely. So now, I, I was asked a question about a week ago, what questions should I ask my employer? And I love, I, I, I hope you come back. I, people, I would love it. You gotta come back. <laughs> when these people emailed me, they found a, what do you call it? A reference in an article from 2017. And they pulled it out. Now, to be honest with you, I do not look at who looks at my research. I'm not a researcher. I chose not to be a professor. But this particular line got my attention. And I, can I read it to you? It's just one sentence. It's like goes on and it does a research review. And it says this. It's very simple. It's a very simple thing. Grand Rose and Basile, 2006, when we published it, found that the violations of the protein career, kind of what we're talking about, protein career, psychological contract, meaning if you mess with violating my protein career value system, right, that they were linked to higher instances of leaving. Hello. Hello. Exactly. That's why they want That's me to right. pull the research up. But if you don't get this, if you don't understand what this means, that is a research sentence. Basically, did you do what you said you were going to do during the pandemic when I was killing myself working from home and doing meetings to China at three in the morning? Did you do what you said? Did you say that you would help us come back to work in a way that was going to help me integrate my life? Did you do that? No. And so there, like that's, okay, you lied to me. To be fancy language psychological contract violation you lied to me that's what it means i'm sorry exactly ahead, and we're paying the price <laughs> no 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 so here we are so we've got about eight minutes left but i want you to be cognizant of this and i want you to give us some messages going forward in 2022 give us your forecast what jobs are going to be in high demand where should be where should we be looking how do we build relationships give us the forecast for the year let us know 
No, my assessment of we saw this, we saw the numbers come out in January that um, numbers, it was, st it's still an employee's market. I really fully expect um, we're going to see that all the way through first quarter, probably the beginning of second quarter. I think maybe by the middle of the second quarter, we'll probably start to see some things level off, but it's still going to be very high. Un uh, unemployment still going to continue to drop, which means that the market is still going to be very competitive and therefore it's still going to be an employee's market. Um, I well, mentioned it earlier. Oh, go ahead, Ellen. What industries? Talk specific. Where should we so look? Specific, I think you're obviously healthcare is still going to be um, a huge area that we're going to need all levels of healthcare, all types of positions within hospitals, all levels of experience. So there's a lot of opportunities for people from, you know, I'm, you know, maintenance and uh, housekeeping all the way through the technical, you know, radiology, all these positions are in dire need right now in the healthcare industry. So the market is open for all levels of professionals. Where then, else? um, and then also we're seeing a boom again within the technology field. We're seeing this, we're seeing a second wave of the tech boom happening and um, they're leading the way with work from home options. So that's one of the reasons com their companies are striving. So, and again, probably some more, that's more mid-level to higher level experience, but really definitely going to see that. And then I think we're going to see an increase within, we're going to see a resurgence of hospitality. Um, you know, that's going to be the field. And, but I will tell you the key with the hospitality and the restaurant market is going to be wages. It is going to be, yeah. are you willing to pay? And the reality is, I think as consumers, we will continue. We want to be able to go out to restaurants and be able to enjoy our, you know, those moments. So we'll pay it, you know, we will pay it. it you know, we may not like it, but we'll pay it. Um, and so I think once they kind of settle some of those, you know, wage issues that we're seeing happening right now, that you're going to see that resurgence come back again, because we kind of realized what we lost when we didn't acknowledge those people that are delivering our food or making our food behind the scenes or, you know, in the hot, you know, in the hotels, you know, serving us and not really realizing the impact that, it, you know, not having those workers, what it has done to our economy and to our society. So um, those are three areas that I think you can definitely see some immediate, um, you know, you're going to see a lot of opportunities for. And that's certainly all over the world. So you mentioned before that some of the places you like to investigate are like LinkedIn and a couple of other places. Give us some concrete places. Are there some job sites that you prefer or how do people get started? I know you said your your career journal, again, they should go to your website, which is yep. what, findsucceedachieve.com for Melanie, yep. and then maybe book a session or two or three or four with you because that would be great. And you can certainly use a career coach like Melanie for sure. But give us some concrete ideas of how we should build relationships and what seeds we should pl be planting right now. So right now, you know, I'm a huge advocate of LinkedIn. It is a, it is a cornerstone of what I do because I, um, with all of my clients, so I'm a big advocate of that. Um, I, I'll come back to LinkedIn, but I'll say, you know, utilize uh, job boards such as Indeed. Indeed's pretty exhaustive with a lot of options. And I do like how its platform is particularly set up. So it does make it fairly um you know, amenable, but also I think with LinkedIn, really fine. Again, we go back to those companies. It's a great place to go do some research on. Uh, you know, it's it's a social media platform. It's disguised as social media, but it's heart and soul. It's just a big search engine. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, so that's that to me is where you really should start because it, everything there is at your fingertips. Um, you can connect with any with people all over the world and people that maybe you've forgotten about and reconnect, let them know where you're, what's ha happening in your world, what you're looking for, have your network, start networking. Don't be afraid to network and reach out and introduce yourself to people. Cause that's honestly too, what employees are looking for. If you say you're a go-getter and you can be a go-getter, show them that you are. And so it's, it's as simple as a button, you know, a click of a button on LinkedIn, you can do everything on that platform. So. Fantastic. So do, do us a favor also, spend just a little bit of time and tell us the kind of services you provide as yes, a career please. coach, what you do. So please. I do a little soup to 
nuts of everything just because that was my career. So I work with individuals from helping them with their resumes to helping them craft their LinkedIn profiles so that they are prepared job searchers. Uh, I go into job search strategies with them, how to, how to navigate the market. I use all of my resources as having been a former recruiter and shedding light on what happens behind the scenes. I work with individuals on how to properly network as well as interviewing and preparing them for interviews and getting their confidence and mindset really set and strong so that they believe in themselves and that they go into that interview, you know, really with the control of that interview and really being able to tell their story so that it's understood and it's, you know, it gives them the spotlight of why they're so unique and why they should be hired. I love it. Um, one last thing too, that I know you work with people on. All of these references I made seemed one-sided, meaning if the company doesn't do this, if your manager doesn't do this, I want to just be clear. If y'all listen to this now and you're looking for a job, it's also when you as an employee violate or break a promise. This is, this is a theory that I got to study with Peter Drucker. He hated us. He could not stand the PhD <laughs> students. But I got to sit in his class because I told him I was a business person. But what you're doing now is going to help people be unique and extraordinary in the job search that their heart is calling them for. I was homeless. I know when you need a job, you got to get a job, right? Yep. That's right. And there but are jobs you. out there. That's thank right. Thank you for today. And Melanie, thank you so thank much. You. Career coach. And we're all very appreciative. Go to findsucceedachieve.com. Thank you so much for being yeah. with us. Yeah. Till One last time. thing. Let me say this because I got a text message from somebody. No, do not tell the people you're interviewing with that you got burned out on your last job. Absolutely. Right. I know you want to share. Don't overshare. <laughs> Call exactly. Melanie. Yeah. She'll talk to you about what to say. <laughs> Call Melanie. Melanie. Please do not overshare. <laughs> Call Melanie. Thank That's you. That's right. What a Call great Melanie. Show. All righty. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks oh, so much. God. I want to thank all of you for tuning us in, turning us on. Benny pushing all the right buttons. Thank you, Jacob and Olivia. And to all of you, you are the best audience on the planet. We have been with you 20 years. We understand fluctuation in the job market. We know, and I know personally the pain of that. Don't put yourself through it. Call Melanie, get some help, get some consult, get your heart to do the thing you want it to do, but get the skills to get the job you want. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to Recovery Recharged with Certified Life and Recovery Coach, Ellen Stewart, Pushy Broad from the Bronx. Don't miss your next opportunity to let me help you recharge your recovery, let go of your secrets, and change the way you think, feel, and act right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com.